Ismael was a boy who had great interest in living out his wildest dreams. But he was very poor. Since he loved the ocean, he decided to become a sailor and save his pennies by working on a boat. Before departing, Ismael spent the night at an inn where he met Queequeg, an Indian whale hunter. They became fast friends and decided to travel together. <laughs> The two friends found work on a boat called Pequod, an enormous and beautiful whaling boat. The owner was a man called Peleg, though no one knew anything about the captain. <laughs> After days on the high sea, Captain Ahab finally appeared. He was a man who always seemed angry. He had a large scar on his face, and his peg leg was made of a whalebone. <sighs> Captain Ahab had lost his leg when a giant whale attacked him years before. Since then, he had been following it without rest and promised to give a golden coin away to the first man who found it. The sailors called that whale Moby Dick, and they claimed it was as big as it was dangerous, and that its skin was whiter than sea foam. As they navigated south, Queequeg explained to Ismael that whales were important to the people of the region. From these creatures, the villagers also got meat, soap, candles, and most importantly, oil meat. for kerosene lamps. Soap, candles, oil. One morning, the sailors caught sight of a school of whales on the horizon. The men quickly got into boats and began shooting their harpoons. But there was no trace of the elusive white whale. After all of the hustle and bustle, Queequeg showed Ismael all of the animals that made the ocean their home. Dolphin. Ismael listened with great interest as he loved learning about the sea. Beluga whale. Killer whale. Gray whale. Sperm whale. Blue whale. Suddenly, another sailor claimed to have seen Moby Dick, and the boat began to follow it but the creature swam away quickly, even faster than the ocean waves. Further off, they saw a round, white form. But as they drew closer, a gigantic octopus with eight legs surfaced. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They managed to escape it, and the Pequod again set course to sail the seven seas to find Moby Dick. The Atlantic Ocean. The Antarctic Ocean. The Indian Ocean. The Pacific Ocean. The Arctic Ocean. While the Pequod crossed the Pacific Ocean, 
a great storm surprised the crew. Tornadoes, typhoons, and huge waves shook the boat, preventing it from following its course. Storm. Tornado. Tsunami. Lightning bolt. After the storm, the sailors didn't know where they were. Ahab tried to use his compass to orient himself, but the storm had ruined it. North. West. East. South. In that very moment, another whaling boat appeared. It was called Raquel. Its captain indicated where he'd last seen Moby Dick, and Ahab, determined to capture it, ordered the boat's course to follow it. Finally, the crew arrived to where Moby Dick had attacked Captain Ahab. Grumpily, he climbed the crow's nest and saw the animal from there, surfacing and puffing between the waves. <laughs> When the whalers looked on the port side, Moby Dick appeared on the starboard side. When they looked over the prow, the whale appeared at the stern, starboard side. Port side. Stern. Prow. They followed Moby Dick for three days, trying to capture it, but it all seemed impossible. The men were exhausted, all except for Captain Ahab, who continued insisting it be captured. Moby Dick's strength began to weaken after such a long battle. Ahab realized this and threw a harpoon that reached the gigantic animal. But just then, the harpoon cord wound around Ahab's leg, and he was dragged away by the animal. Moby Dick had grown so furious that his strong jaws ripped the boat in two. Ismael jumped into the ocean just in the nick of time and was left floating, clinging to a piece of driftwood. Luckily, the whaling boat Raquel was nearby and came to rescue the young man. And that's how Ismael became the only survivor of the legendary shipwreck. From that day on, he dedicated his life to narrating the great deeds that the crew of the Pequod lived that day and the obsession that eventually led to disaster. <laughs>